into our Father's Word and know what we're going to talk about today, food. I want to talk about the laws, the statutes, the ordinances. The law that pertains to the flesh is a sin to break that law, but what is it a sin against? The health of the flesh. I want to repeat that again. The health and the welfare of the flesh it really doesn't have that much to do with whether you're going to go to heaven or go to hell. That is my opinion, and many would disagree with me on that, but, you know, for the simple reason, the healthier you are, the better you can serve. And uh, yet, I know many people that are unhealthy that make better servants than those that are healthy. So I feel that to break one of these laws, it's going to make you sick. That's what. God created these flesh bodies and he sent this letter of instructions on how to keep them healthy. So it's kind of up to you as to whether you wish to be healthy. We have enough pollution in this world today that it's very difficult to stay, to remain healthy anyway. So therefore, uh, I would advise that you at least keep these that you can and you'll be a lot better off, all right? Having said that, I wanted you to know in what category sin we're talking about because certainly there is a difference. This is a sin unto the flesh, and you should be healthy. Chapter 14, verse 1, a word of wisdom from our Father. Let's go with it. Ye are Moses continuing. Moses will be, de be returned to the Father in less than 30 days after this teaching. So he's really laying it on good. Verse 1, ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For who? For the dead. What, is a, what does a one that loves God, uh, why would they grieve? Of course, naturally, we miss our loved ones. But when you would go to the point, as many heathen still do to this day, to in a ritual of mourning for the dead when we that serve God know that that's what we all work forward to. We're, we rejoice for the dead in this sense, that they are with the Father. So no more suffering, no more pain. That is to say, if they've been good servants, there's going to be a little more pain down the road if they haven't, disappointments and so forth. That is to say, on judgment. But uh, don't beware of heathen practices. And it's real sad that many traditions of men work in heathen practices because for some reason preachers have always wanted to do whatever it takes to draw a crowd. Now, you know, uh, I suppose many people say, well, if you would be a little more sweeter, you'd be a lot more popular. Well, I, I could be a lot more kissy-kissy, but then what would I gain from that? A bunch of kissy kissies, and I'd rather somebody else had them. I want to teach the Word exactly the way it's written with the emotions that our Father sets forth to warn the people when there is a danger whereby they can protect their souls. So uh, watch and beware of traditions that slip in to the church. They're dangerous. How are they dangerous? They displease God. You hurt his feelings when you won't listen to his letter and you take on what brother so-and-so thinks versus brother so-and-so. The law of precedent rather than straight on, yea, nay. This is what God says. It is written. Verse 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee, to be a peculiar, this word peculiar in the Hebrew is treasure, to be a treasure people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Now, everyone deserves what they have or born into what they deserve from the first earth age. God doesn't play favorites. These that he considers a treasure are a treasure because he chose them before the foundation. They earned it. That's the way our Father operates. He's totally, completely fair and just. 
Now, if he decides to use someone, as it is written in Romans chapter 9, if I, I'm, I'm the potter, I make the clay to serve me, and if I want to make a flower vase out of uh, the same lump or a chamber pot, that's my business. Don't ask me why I do it. But you should love him enough to know that as it is written in that same chapter of Romans 9, Esau, he hated, Jacob he loved. Right. Why? How could he do that while they were still little embryos in the mother's womb? Because the souls came from him when he would say, let us make man in our image. He knew them well. Okay, anyway, God, many people might be upset or concerned. Well, why would God play favorites? He doesn't. There is a just reason why. They earned it. Verse 3. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. He means that. You know why? It'll make you sick. You will have diseases because of it. Because abom abominations carry disease. Then you've got to go down and get all pumped full of some kind of antibiotic or something else, and that throws your natural system off. And pretty soon you are so revolving in circles trying to get back to that that is natural that you're liable to lose your way. You could even die. Now, what is an abominable thing? Well, again, our Father is a very fair person. He created everything. It has a purpose. He created these, the example, we have freshwater fish, we have saltwater fish. But you see, there's one big problem. The bottom of the pond gets all murky. The body of the pond gets a lot of dead stuff in it. So God created suckers called scavengers. And they just go around and they just clean up the bottom of everything. I mean, they're just like a big old vacuum cleaner. But then you eat the good fish because if you eat one of those suckers, they've took in all of the disease. It will make you sick. That, that's just common sense. Whether it be uh, most carnivores, now there, there are exceptions to every rule, but it's a pretty good rule of the thumb you can go by. N uh, no carnivore, that means an animal that eats flesh, is uh, you should, they do not normally or they are not normally accepted by God as food. Usually it is a grazer. Why? Because our bodies are made out of clay. That's what our bodies are created from. That's what they are. Um, our bodies consume organic minerals as well as various vitamins that go into our tummies and the tummy converts them, they get into the bloodstream, the metabolism takes them through the body and feeds the body and you are what you eat. So I tell you, in as much as God created everything, it's pretty wise if you listen to him, it does make a difference. I know you've got a few knuckleheads that are going to tell you these revolving revs, well, God cleansed them all. No, he didn't. They're still scavengers. They still clean up the murk. You know, an air conditioner is good to filter and cool your house, but when you get through uh, filtering all the air, do you take the, do you take the, um, the, uh, the thing that filters your filter out of it and squeeze it out and make you a nice glass of tea? I think not. Then why in the world would you take an animal that God created for a good purpose to be a filter to take in disease and eat it? That's an abomination. Why? It's against God's plan. Anytime something is perverted against God's way, it's wrong, period. Many would say, well, that is good, but that is an oversimplification. Not by much. That's just about the way the old jar sits on its own bottom. Don't eat scavengers, whether it's a bird, fish, or animal, and you will be a lot healthier. You'll have a lot less doctor bills. You'll have a lot less drug bills, and you'll be happy. 
that's basically what that will bleed down to. Now let's get into specific cases. Verse 4. There, these rather are the beast which ye shall eat. It's all right for you to partake of these. The ox, that's the bovine community. That's beef, uh, grazers, graze on that old grass. The sheep, the sheep are probably the most easy to digest food there is. They're healthy for you. The fat's not as uh, irritable to the system even as beef fat would be. And that's why God would say the fat belongs to me. Don't you eat it. That's very biblical. Leave the fat alone. Right. And the goat, the goat being edible. Verse 5. The heart, that's a deer, basically, and the roebuck being a deer and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the figarg, uh, that, those, that's a mountain goat, okay? And the wild ox, that should really be translated antelope because of, um, of, um, uh, of the Hebrew word, and the... Uh, Chamas or Kamas. Kamas is a Hebrew word. It comes from a Hebrew word that means that skips and jumps and like a mountain sheep. Some people think antelope, be that as it may, but they're skippy. If you've ever seen mountain sheep, um, if you've seen them play on a steep cliff, you'd say they, the Hebrew word of lightly touching the ground fits, all right? But those are all edible. You may partake of them. Verse 6, uh, and, and I might say something else. As we studied in the last um, lecture or so back, the deer you can't offer for a sacrifice. Well, uh, let's put it this way. You can't offer for a sacrifice an animal that grows in wild that God takes care of. Why, it's his already. So when you partake of them also, you better be very thankful for them, God took care of them. He was out the expense of raising them. Verse 6. And every beast that parteth the hoof and cleaveth the cleft into two claws, that means a split hoof, and cheweth the cud among the beast, that you shall eat. That, that, that's okay. Well, what is the cud? Well, the cud comes from um, our we, we have a, an analogy of the word meditate that the, the ancient is kind of like it's ta its etymology is taken from chewing the cud. Like, in other words, a bovine has more than one stomach and it fills the stomach and then it swallows the cud uh, when it lies down and uh, it absorbs in the stomach that wasn't digested and brings that up and they chew on it. Like you should absorb in your mind, pull it up from the depths of your mind what you have absorbed that day and chew on it a little bit. Meditate on it. And so it is. That's, now, many times you're going to have an animal that chews the cud. Not many times, but a few times. But it doesn't have a split hoof. He will make it very clear for us. Let's get to it. Verse 7. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat of them that chew the cud or them that divide the cloven hoof as the camel and the hare. That's a jackrabbit. You know, it's not a, not a cottontail. That's a jackrabbit. Don't eat jackrabbits. You'd be, uh, I think the Depression years were the only time that anyone ate jackrabbits. And the cooney, that's a rock badger. For they chew the cud, they do that right enough, but divide not the hoof, therefore they are unclean unto you. In other words, you're going to get sick if you eat them. There are various, various diseases from their cleansing the earth that are carried by them. Now, don't ask me to pull a scientific experiment here and document that. It's just a fact. Verse 8. And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Now, 
most of us uh, in uh, days gone by when maybe we didn't know any better, you look forward to hog killing day. But let me tell you something about the swine. The swine is an animal that they don't chew the cud right enough, but they also do not have sweat glands. So every bit of the poison, basically, naturally kidneys throw off a, a portion, but they can't sweat out poison like you do. In other words, you get sick, you run a fever, and you just, the, po the poison just pops out of your whole body because you perspire, all right? Or when you perspire from working, that gets rid of poisons in your system and in your body. Well, all the poison that a swine partakes of from the time they were born till they die is just stored up there waiting for you, waiting for you. Now, hey, again, this is not a sin to death. If you want to eat pork, if you like... Now, there are so, well, I don't know if I could get along without bacon or sausage. Beef sausage, lamb sausage is much better. Well, I don't know that, I wouldn't say beef sausage was better. It's just as good, basically. Beef bacon is fantastic. Uh, and um, sometimes you have to make it yourself, and I think that's what makes it all the better. But anyway, you, you don't want to eat poison. It will make you sick. One of the first things a medical doctor, and all these years they finally learn, you, you get a bad stomach problem, and they'll say, leave pork alone. Leave fat alone. Isn't it strange that finally they catch up to the Word of God? I, I find it fascinating. But again, it's not a sin to hell. If you want to eat it, hey, that's your problem. If you want to be unhealthy, that's your problem. Um, but it will make you sick. I, I will tell you something. I went on to these health laws when I was about 20 years old. Have you ever wondered why that, and, and you know, there are exceptions to every rule, and I'll even knock on wood as I say this. I've been broadcasting about 18 years to satellite daily um, and teaching on the weekend. Have you ever seen me miss a, a, a lecture? I don't think so. Do you know why? I can't afford to get sick. Therefore, I must eat by God's health laws. That's the only way I can stay healthy. And I'm getting on along quite a few years where you uh, get a little forgetful and can't hardly remember your name and you have to ask somebody. Well, that's all right, but still be healthy. All right, it's, it's much better. Now, sometimes, but anyway, I, I, what, the, what I wanted to share with you, when I was about 20 years old, I haven't tasted pork since then knowingly. But sometimes when you're on the road traveling, if they cook your egg in pork fat, you will have a stomach ache. That's how rich pork is. It will get to you that quick. And I've had a whole crew just almost with the bins from eating uh, a breakfast, which is very difficult to, to find where somebody will cook a breakfast without cooking it in pork fat. Why, it's cheaper, I guess, maybe. But anyway, it will make you sick for about an hour. And some, some of the crew is even longer. So we have to be very careful of what we partake of. Now, does that mean we feel we're better than, no, you can eat pork and be my buddy. That's your choice. Hey, I can, it's, it doesn't bother me, but I guarantee you, it will bother you and it will catch up with you. Your father says don't, and, and right now we might as well get this out of the way what the revolving revs say. Well, you don't understand. In Acts chapter 10, this big sheet come down from heaven. And there was swine, and there was creeping things, and there was filth and abomination on it, and God told Peter, you eat. And Peter said, uh-uh, God. He disagreed with God there. He said, I've never, never eaten any of that stuff in my life. And God brought that sheet down three times, telling him to eat. The fourth time, I mean, it didn't come down a fourth time, but if you have any smarts at all, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to read the closing thoughts. Then Peter knew he wasn't talking about eating unclean fat flesh, but that he should not call a Gentile uncommon. 
or common rather, unclean in other words. The analogy was that Gentiles, whosoever will accept Christ, therefore that was God's way of telling him, it's all right for you to go help this Gentile family, meaning Cornelius. You got that? The, the Greek is very specific. Uh, I would suggest that you, uh, when you talk about other people, alods, uh, that uh, you'll, you'll understand that he didn't say the food was clean. And then you'll have those who will say, well, then surely you've never read 1 Timothy chapter 4. I've read it in many languages. I know what it says. Never let a man judge you you know, usually people want to go to verse 4 and start there. For some reason, they have this bad, bad habit of forgetting to start at the beginning, verse 3, where it says, Never let a man judge you in marriage or meat, for it is legal and lawful for you to partake of all that God has created to be received. Now, you're reading here, does that, meet, does that ring a bell with you? You know, just because that is the primary subject of today, I, I think I miss, I didn't misquote it, but it wasn't verbatim. So, uh, where did I say that was? I think I said it was in 1 Timothy 4. And I think I said you need to start in verse 3. And what do you know? There it is. My old memory is working pretty good. Well, that's when you pass 70, you got to be careful, though, it'll slip up on you. All right, anyway, here we go. Chapter 4, 1 Timothy, verse 3. Forbidding to, uh, uh, in other words, there would be people coming. I'm going to read verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That means uh, um, carterized. Do you know what carterization is? That's when it's burned with a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received. To be received. Did he create the swine to be received? No. Doesn't apply. With thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, what your revolving rev will say, well, as long as you say thanks, it's all right to eat it. No. If, if you're dumb enough that you'll eat poison, you're going to be sick. God didn't say that. Now, are you going to listen to your father? He did not create scavengers to be received. So, hey, you know, and here I'm bearing down on this pretty hard because it's not a sin to death except for the flesh, you know, it's not a sin to your spiritual body. It just makes your flesh body sick. And the reason I am bearing down, it's a lot better to feel good than it is to hurt. Oh, that old hurting business, is, it'll catch up with you. And there'll be people who say, well, I prayed for healing and I got it, but here I, it didn't last. Well, <laughs> El Dumo, you know. The person, God touches them and heals them because of their faith, and then they go back to eating garbage again. And you think that's not going to make you sick? Of course it will. Your healing will not last if you empty the garbage disposal into your gut. It won't work. You'll be sick. Why? God told you better. Act on it. Now, that's pretty strong saying. It's just some, because I love you so much, I want you to feel good. I don't want you to be out a bunch of doctor bills and have to lose time and everything else. God made, created these bodies. He knows exactly what it takes to make them just, I mean, hit on all eight without skipping a beat. Okay? So do it his way, and you'll be a lot happier. Now we're returning to Deuteronomy 14, and I have gotten so enthralled in my teaching that I've lost my place. It's verse 9. Let's go with it. These you shall eat of all that are in the waters. Now we're going to go to fish. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. Ten. Now that's, that's pretty clear. You know, I'll get these questions. Well, does that mean tuna? Does that mean, does that mean, um, uh, oh, Lord, I love lobster? Well, I do too. But 
shall eat all in the waters that have fins and scales. Uh, hey, you're on your own, you know. It, um, again, it's not a sin to death, it's a sin to health. All right. Verse 10. And whosoever hath not, and whatsoever rather, hath not fins and scales, ye may not, I repeat, N-O-T, not eat. It is unclean unto you. Being unclean unto you means it will give you a tummy, tummy ache. It will make you sick. It will stunt your growth. It will make little things pop out on your skin. It will, it will make your body not be natural because you have abused it, all right? It's unclean unto you. Now, I'm, I'm, those are my own words, and, and that's usually what poison will do to you, all right? Verse 11. Of all clean birds, here we go, of all clean birds you shall eat. You shall eat. They're okay. You eat them clean birds. Twelve. But these, now this will give you a category that it's pretty easy for one, and I would just, we, some, among scholars of God's Word and students such as myself, there are differences of opinion. But it has to do with health, therefore make up your own mind. I feel this list is pretty complete to break it down. And my first saying, and the reason I like to use that for simplification, if it's a meat eater, if I were you, I'd kind of leave it alone. Verse 12. But these are they of which you shall not eat. That's big old not. The eagle and the osprey. That's the gear eagle, all right? And the osprey. Why? What do they do? They eat mice. They eat scavengers. They eat anything they can catch. Does that make them clean? Uh-uh. Why? They don't eat grain. They eat, um, well, I think I've drawn well enough a picture. It's kind of a sickening mess when you see them even feed their young. Thirteen. The uh, gleed and the kite. Now, the kite is a falcon. What does a falcon do? Well, it's, it's a, it kind of falls in the eagle family. And the vulture and after his kind. Now, the gleed is a vulture, and that's after that kind. Anything that's, well, what does vultures eat? Well, they clean up dead bodies off the road, just like crows, you know, an old crow will kind of, which is the part of the raven family, don't eat crow, you know. Verse 14, and here we go, right here. And every raven after his kind, that's, a lot of them old blackbirds are just, Henri and they're scavengers. They don't eat anything that's clean. That's why I like to use my rule of thumb, all right? If a bird doesn't live on grain, I don't want to eat it, all right? Verse 15, and the owl. Have you ever seen an owl's nest? Whoa. And the night hawk. See, it gives you a pretty good category here if you're, and the chuckle. And the hawk after his kind. Now, the chucko in the Navy, we used to accuse them of feeding these a lot. They're seagulls, okay? The word in the Hebrew has to do with sea, and, and I figure it must be a seagull, all right? You, you don't want to eat them. Verse 16, the little owl and the great owl and the swan. That's a, they're a no-no. 17, and the pelican, no, no. And the gear eagle, and the comorant, no, no. Verse 18, and the stork, very unclean bird. And the uh, heron, after her kind, that means all of those types, your egrets and so on and so forth, herring. And the lapwing, uh, that is a bittern, all right, if you know what I'm saying. And the bat. I mean, bat's just a flying mouse. As for, I mean, they're a good animal. They get rid of a lot of mosquitoes, be that as it may, but don't eat them. They're not edible. Uh, again, I like my own set of rules. If it eats grain, well, I, I, you know, I'm going to consider it. There are exceptions to this, okay? So, 
Verse 19. And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you, they shall not be eaten. Now, this is going to confuse some people because every, I mean, you know, we know that the prophets partook of locusts. Well, it's a little creature and it flies. But this is talking about something a little different. This is talking about swarming, fast growing insects. You know, don't, don't eat any of those. You know, locust has quite a long lifetime when you take all the stages of it, all right? It's, it's not a quick growing thing. It's important that you see that. Don't need any little living creatures that are swarmers. How can I say that? The Hebrew, the, their, their very name in the manuscripts document that. You with companion Bibles, I hope that it will document that, at least give you a strong lead. Um, example, termites. Termites grow fast and swarm. Well, you, you wouldn't want to reach out and get a big old handful of them, would you? I don't think so. They're not clean. They would make you sick. Now, your choice is in this that do you want to be well or do you want to be sick? Now, I would, like I said, hey, you can eat whatever you want to and still be my buddy as long as you're trying to learn God's Word and, and uh, you wish to live with it, but if you choose to eat whatever, whatever you want to eat, that's your business as far as I'm concerned. It's only my business to see that the Word of God is communicated. And I so enjoy health, I'd like to see everyone else healthy also. Because that's God's way, and He tells us what will make you sick and what will keep you healthy. So I, I think that, and you can hear him talking to us in the background here, if you can hear that old thunder, it's just rolling and pop. That's really not, he's not in the thunder, but it's kind of like amen, you know, from the, uh, I, and I will stop there. Let's go another verse or two, all right? See if we can get through the food laws here. 20, but of all clean fowls you may eat. Now, a lot of people, uh, you've heard me say, I think turkey sausage is all right. That's my opinion. There are some that say they feel the turkey is in the vulture family. Well, I still go by the grain thing. And I watch pretty close, you know, they grow a lot of turkeys in this area, what they partake of. You know, kind of you know what makes a bird clean and what makes a bird unclean by being around it. And so I say turkey sausage or turkey is all right to eat. Some would say not. That's my opinion. Again, it's the sin of health. 21. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, and he may eat it. Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. Now let's kind of, we're, I'm going to close, but I'm going to kind of take these one at a time. Why would God say that you don't eat it, but you could give it to them? Well, that, that's the way they eat anyway. If, if they're not following the Father, they're, um, a heathen's going to eat like a heathen does. All right, and that's it. Now, um, and uh, rather than let it go to waste, give it to them, sell it to them, or whatever. But I, I want to cover, and, and some might say, well, that sounds a little unfair. No, it's not. It's being uh, frugal. It's not being wasteful because that's the way they're going to eat anyway. I can remember, well, I probably shouldn't go into this. I guess I won't. I guess I won't. Um, no, I won't. Let's, let's go into why would you not seethe or boil a, a kid in its mother's milk? That's double jeopardy, a double insult. It's just, uh, this is utilized several times by our father. In other words, the very milk that was to nurture, nurture the calf, you're going to take it and boil the calf in it? The poor little thing didn't have a choice, I mean a chance. If that's the way you're going to do it. So, just remember, don't double, double jeopardy the animal kingdom. Do it God's way, 
and you'll be very healthy. All right, we'll complete this in the next lecture. Listen a moment, won't you please?